Hey, you. Yes, you over there running a business, doing that really great thing that you can do. There's lots more to it than just that, though, isn't there? And of course, this show is all about making conversations count. And we're having to replace those ordinary face-to-face meetings, the networking events with social media channels and starting conversations through our online networks and the content that we're writing. So I put my thinking cap on and thought, who can talk about this? Well, not just one lady came to mind, but two. And they are the Get Savvy Girls. So hold on to your hats. We've two ladies making three in total, all making conversations about getting savvy on social count. So what's new, Wendy Wu? Well, we have a blueprint to success and it's called Making Conversations Count. Are you surprised? It's time to start implementing all of those processes that you've been meaning to do but have been too busy because you've been surviving. It's time to get into thrive mode. And if you really, really, really want to be making a difference within your business and having more conversations and growing that client base, then do get in touch because the ongoing programme is now available. It's a 12-week programme where you work with me to connect with the right people, to be having the right conversations, to be back to them at the right time, to give you the right results. I'll be popping a link to my calendar. Do give me a shout. I'll be absolutely delighted to be able to help you like I've helped all the other people that I have worked with in the past. Let's make it happen for you. Right, better get back to those savvy girls. They'll be getting restless. I see you around online all the time and it just seemed like a natural thing to sort of go, come on, girls, come and talk to Wendy Wu. Yeah. Good job that you're on separate sort of Zoom screens for me to see that one's Anna, one's Anita, or I would get you all muddled up. You know. Oh, lots of people do. Don't worry. Do you, do you have much answer to anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have been called the Duracell Bunny before. Yeah, because you just like you know got loads of energy and things. So yeah. Well, it just fits, and I just thought about it this morning because it was like yeah. lots of people go, oh yes, all right then, that's great, lovely, because they can't actually remember your name. Or I get called Anna. I don't mind, to be fair. I think it is a bit confusing. The names are very similar. We look quite similar. We obviously are quite similar. So I'll answer to anything. Yeah. Well, the double A battery is going to stick. We're going to have to create a hashtag for you, you know, along with the Get Mm. Savvy stuff. Better than the blonde two Ronnies, which we (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yeah, me and Colette, when we were doing our domino effect workshops, gosh, we were called the Ant and Deck of... (laughs) (laughs) But at least it means that you're Mm -hmm. memorable, which is a good thing. And of course, that can't come without having great conversation and being able to sort of tap into people's eco center, you know, of curiosity. I know you guys met at the school gate because I heard a little birdie tell the story already. Yeah. So that's a little bit like how Colette and I got together was by pure accidents, two people at the same time said to us each independently, oh, well, you must know. And you must know. And we were like, No. So we sought each other out at the same time when, oh, somebody just mentioned you to me the other day. Oh, that's funny because I was going to do the same to you. And we'd been living about three miles apart for about 12 years. Oh, wow. And and we went on to, went on a dog walk. And by the end of that dog walk, we'd got our first workshop written in our heads. It's to be. Is that sort of similar to how you guys fell together? Well, we really? happened to live on the same street. So, and our daughters are in the same year. So when they started school, they were both at the same school together. So Anita and I, we could have walked to school together, but we didn't because we had like... We were acquaintances, really. We yeah. Did, we were like, not as you You're like that? Yeah. Hello. 
Hi. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. Um, and if we ended up standing next to each other waiting for the kids to come out, we'd have a bit of a chat. Yeah. Come about. Yeah. Yeah. About the weather. Really. About it raining again. No, we didn't really know each other, but enough to connect on social media. So we were actually um, friends on social media, but really weirdly, even it was a, it's a shame really that we didn't know each other better at the time rather than just hello, hello, because we were going through very similar things. So Anita was splitting up with her husband. I was splitting up with my partner at the same time. And we both moved away from that street and moved kids and lives. Not a million miles away, still in Leicestershire, but in different areas and the kids went to different schools. But maybe if we've had a bit of a, rather than a, surface sort of conversation maybe we would have got to know each other more then but it was only um because we carried on like we obviously just knew each other on Facebook and Anita left her corporate position and wanted to work for herself and I did various different things recruitment property sourcing lots I was one of these shiny penny people I was always knew I was meant for more but wasn't you know I never just went for one thing I always did all different things and one of those things was I used to do LinkedIn courses for my clients in recruitment as well all different things but one of the things I did was networking. I was a member of BNI, which is a well-known networking organization. And every morning, once a week, I used to go live to talk about that networking. But also, I did it every Wednesday morning at about six o'clock because I thought, otherwise, I won't get into the swing of being regularly going live. It's, if I do it, at least then I'll do it once a week. If not, you know, not, hardly anyone used the live button then. It was like people were just absolutely so scared of it. And yeah, so Anita, she used to see me on that. Probably like, what was she doing that for? And then, but then obviously when she realized she needed to network herself, she kind of reached out and said, do you want to grab a coffee? So we did. Um, mm-hmm. Just really, so I could send her on all these different places to help her network and help with her. What would you call your business then? It's like an independent marketing. I was a marketing consultant. Yeah, so really, because I mm-hmm. left like the corporate bubble protection. I've been in marketing for 25 years and thought, right, I need to come find some clients. What the hell do I do? How do I do that? And someone said, oh, you need to get out networking. And I have no idea what to do. Saw Anna all the time talking about networking. And I was that awful person who went, hi, we haven't spoken for seven years. It's your brain is <laughs> cocky. Okay. And Anna being Anna, the kind of person that goes, yeah, sure. And went, yeah, okay. And said, go here, go there. And then we just bumped into each other all the time, didn't we? And we'd have a, more of a chat about, you know, how life was going, how work was going, what she was up to, what I was up to. And we just gradually I think got to know each other better yeah well certainly the B&I way I know that yeah. way I go on a oh, the see, that was the first I'd never done any networking in my life and Anna said go to this one she didn't even tell me that you had to do I didn't even know you had to do a one minute pitch I didn't even know you had to pay so I turned up no money on me but a card and they said oh it's 10 pounds please so I was like oh uh, have you got can you take a card no <laughs> this guy had to lend me the money and then it's like half six in the morning in January, really cold. And then they went around the room and they went, Anita, do you want to stand up and do your minute? And I was thinking, no, I can't think of anything I want to do now. <laughs> so I, by then I'd left, hadn't I? Because I sent yes. email with B&I. I'd left there by then, but I still obviously really like people. And, you know, I sent you to somebody that needed a visit. <laughs> That's yes. fine, but yeah, one of them. Because I used to get to such a while. That was the easy bit for me, just getting people to come along. So I sent it yeah. to them. I know that the struggle was, but no, to be fair, I was why not genuinely horrified by it because I'm not naturally an extrovert. I'd only been doing my business a couple of weeks. I didn't even have fixed in my head what I was doing or I had no clients. I'm not the kind of person that can stand up and go, oh, I'm really great at this when I'm, you know, haven't really walked the walk yet. So I was just in, you know, outside I was quite composed, but inside I was just like, oh, oh my God, this isn't for me. I'm going to have to go and get a job. And luckily, B&I is fantastic for a lot of people, but it's also, I think, not the route a lot of other people want to go down. And so I found that other route that really was felt more comfortable for me. And that's exactly, I'm in my comfort zone now. Uh, I've been definitely. talking about networking a lot lately because whilst I am a B&I member, I still network at other places. And yeah. there's some great groups out there with slightly different formats. There's more relaxed atmospheres. There's those that don't expect anything off you, but to just come and have a good chat. And, a and good they're actually con- extremely supportive as well. Yeah. And a good yeah. conversation. You always remember that good conversation, yeah. don't mm-hmm. you? If and, you're and, more and, new yeah. to business in any way, I would say definitely go to any networking just to get around other people that have also got business. Just even if it's just to yeah. make you realise that <laughs> these people that are business owners don't have to shit together either. You're not alone. <laughs> and, and the thing is, the first time I went to DNI, I had a chocolate bouncing high business, and I was just like the same as Anita there. I was like terrified, and I really like beat myself up about it as well because 
have like a background in performing arts. So, you know, I used to be on stage in front of all different people yeah. and I'd see myself as this really confident person. But then when it was like all eyes on me in a group of business, you know, yes. there was a lot of suits there as well, you know, and I'd done recruitment. So, and like loads of opportunities to talk and be confident and things. And I remember standing up, babbling, going too fast and then just sitting down and almost feeling like my face was a bit red as well. And, and I was like really annoyed with myself because I was like, what's wrong with you? And even the guy next to me was like, well done. You know, like in a, he was trying to be nice, but it's quite patronising way of like, they're there. Of course, I've got what's wrong with me. But it is that kind of, you know, that I think that's what scares people. Yeah. And I get it. That's why people that we work with our clients, they get scared of doing going live on, you know, Facebook for the same reason, because it's something that they don't it's do. So they probably get annoyed. They could speak to anyone face to face. Um, but then when they have to do it on a live or on a Facebook, then it's a, a different thing. Yeah, there's so many fears that we give ourselves, isn't there, about how we're going to come across. That's all in our head. and Nobody else can read our minds to know that that's going yeah. on. For me, networking is kind of like the core of your marketing, because if you can stand up in front of a whole bunch of strangers and have that spotlight on you and be succinct, and I get 30 seconds. How hard is that for somebody who's got so many many words in a head? So it's all about time. It's keeping the meeting on time, you know, within a certain format. But if you can put together, you know, people call it, don't they, the elevator pitch. That's probably the savviest bit of marketing that you can ever do. This is why we bang on all all the time about like pick one thing, because I guarantee you when people have two hats, when they go into these places, no one remembers either hat. Like they just don't, they just, they'll go, oh, I think she talked, spoke about maybe interior design and maybe like copywriting. I'm not too sure. And then actually they just don't remember you. So it's, it's important to get. I just think on that harsh as that is, I think well, they can't be very good at either. You know, I know. You've got to do two of But I don't yeah. like that because I. So if you really, if you're good enough at this. one thing, you can make enough money at that. And then anything else is a hobby, obviously. So mm. I think, well, well, you've got to add all these strings to your bow. You're not making money at those things, are you? So why would I'll I use be, someone that's not yeah. an expert? You yeah. can have multiple do it, Yeah, and nail that one thing first. And, and yeah. get it. But I think it, that yeah. networking is so important. I think what a lot of people don't realise is that social media is just an online version of offline. Exactly. Online. And so they use it to try and go, well, why are you doing for this? And you'd never truck up to a networking meeting week in, week out going, Hi, do you want to buy this pen? Do you want to buy this pen? You know, when people are chatting to you at the coffee. Hi, how are you today? Good. Do you want to buy a pen? I don't know, Anita. What sort of pen is it? It's a cheap pen. Yeah. No, me. I actually um, owned somebody. I heard this lady. God, I can't remember who it was. Somebody on Instagram the other day. She was doing a, a live and she said, people are forgetting the social in the social media. Mm-hmm. Like, as in like, you know, people say, I'm going to take a break from social media. Well, you almost like, you're saying you're taking a break from people then, aren't you? Because it's people. So basically you're saying you want to take a break away from people. And I think that's not really, they're almost not using it in the right way then if they feel they need to take a break. Something's not aligned, something's not right if you've got to take, yeah. make that effort to take a break away from social media. There's a podcast I would recommend right. for you. A good friend of mine, Jenny Proctor, she runs Marketing for Introverts. And we're constantly having this wrangle over introvert and extrovert. And I would just say this, doesn't matter. I feel like I'm on the spectrum. I can be extremely extroverted or extremely introverted. And that's all down to energy. So, so long as you can manage your energy, you shouldn't need to take a break from anything. Yeah. Why would you? Plus, I think that there are, I wouldn't count myself as very extroverted unless I had a glass of wine, in which case, you know, I am. But yeah, on a general day to day, I wouldn't say I was an extrovert. However, you pick up tools as you go through life, don't you? And yeah. if you're running your own business, there are certain things you need to do. One of those is marketing and one of those is selling. And you can't be successful unless you nail those two things. So you need to pick up whatever tools you can to get good at them. And you can use social media to both market and to sell your products or services. And it's a fantastic way to do it. And, you know, if you're struggling to do that, then all you've got to do is go and find out what you need to do and then start doing it and make it work for you. Instead of just saying, that's not for me. You know, I see people say social media isn't for me. Our social media doesn't work for my business. And we see it all the time, don't we, Anna? And 100% of the time, it's people aren't doing it right. And they're slogging away, doing a load of stuff. You know, like phrase, being a busy fool. 
And actually, if you're not getting the right results, it's not that there's something wrong with that platform. It's that you're just, you just need to tweak. And often it's not massive changes, but you know, if you're struggling with your confidence or you're struggling to close those sales or you're struggling because you're spending too much time on social media, then go and find a way to make it work for you. Definitely. Certainly conversation on social media has got to be what underpins lots of things because you're not really selling anything, are you? You've already identified that there's something useful to talk about and that you can be helpful. I think as long as you can be helpful, then you're kind of already doing the job of the salesperson anyway. And if you back that up with the passion that you have for the business that you're doing, I don't know, I can't see how you would fail. Social media is a great way for people to get to know, like, and trust you. So to get to say, is this the kind of person who I think can help me and I want to give my hard-earned money to? Do I trust them? Do I like them? We want to work with people that we like, don't we? Um, So you can use social media to build all of that and have conversations with people and get to know. And we know people on social media who we've then gone on to meet in real life and I feel like they're an actual friend Because I've known them a couple of years, but I've never actually met them. And then there are people that we've never met. We just know them on social media. So I feel like my network is bigger because of social media, definitely. The biggest compliment I was paid, and this is something that I always say to people to aspire to, is if you can be the same online as in person and people go, oh, you're exactly the same as I expected. I wasn't quite sure if you were going to be like. It's that. weird when people say that to you, isn't it? People say that. Mm. I think. Well, what did you? What did but you do you think that's because there's so of? many fake mm-hmm. influence? I think exactly. it's because of, yeah, and it, they get outed. I think because you can't, especially those ones that they obviously have a team to run all the social media for them, and maybe they do videos and whatnot, and then it's all cut together, and then it's shipped out, and they don't really show up that much. And they might. I've been to events before, back in the day, before lockdown where I've watched someone on stage and I've been mesmerised and I felt really connected to them and I thought, God, they're amazing. And then they've come off of the stage or whatever, not a huge stage, you know, where you get those ones at their events and there's maybe like a few hundred people there or whatnot. And then I thought, I'm going to go and chat to them afterwards. So you've gone up and you've sort of said, oh, I really like that. And then they're just like, they talk differently. Like, it's like, where did that person go? That I've just watched like boss the stage. They've just like learned that, but actually that's not who they are. So then they scurry off and be who they are. So they're actually just performing. They're just actors. There's a lot of um, online gurus who are just actors. That's it. And you, you you might get sucked in by the fact that they've got this, you know, rags to riches story and they're humble and this, that and the other. And actually, when you get to know them or you get to see them somewhere else in, in an environment that's perhaps a little bit different, then they're not like that at all. And that is, a, so I think, yeah, it's a great compliment that you have there. And we get that all the time that we are literally yeah. just the same. There's no kind of like falsities. Yeah, but there are still some that are there, like puppets, really, aren't they? They're just the face of it, told to say this in this way, and then they're actually not like that at all. And those performers, you know, you can spot them now, I think. If you're yes. knocking them around them long enough, you can. But if yeah. they're, they're coming out and they're doing a, one bit of marketing or they're pushing one particular thing, we can keep retents up for that time, take the money off them, everyone. And then when you get working with them for, you know, a month in or whatever, you think, oh, actually, it's not what they said it was going to be. Yeah, it's a yeah. shame. A guest on the show, Larry Long Jr., he's a big motivational speaker over in America and his dad's a sporting hero. He's got big shoes to fill because people yeah. admire the family name already. And, mm. you know, when you've got fame and you're black and you're in America and, and all of these things, and he'd got some hangups. And he's this big character and I knew there was going to be lots and lots of energy. But you know what? He's deadly serious about what it is he does. And I think that's what you want to see, isn't it? That you want that energy. You want people to lift you up, but really to know that they're doing it because they want to be there really doing it. It's really real. Do, yeah. Because we had Jarek Robbins on our um, show, who's um, the son of Tony Robbins. And I think, you imagine the pressure in like Tony Robbins' son. We actually were told not to talk about his dad, which was fine by us because, we, you know, we wanted to um, you know, find out about him and what he does. But he said he, said he had to learn the, the hard way. Uh, because he made a lot of mistakes at the start because he just thought this stuff's going to be easy. <laughs> and then, yeah. He did say, didn't he? When I like, went around the world, made all this money, or so he thought. And then at the end of the year, the accountant said, oh, well, if you'd have stood still, you'd be 30 grand better off than you are now. Basically, he'd just lost $30,000 in the year that he'd gone out and done all this amazing stuff. So he hadn't actually made any money, just lost 30 grand. So, oh, the, but the lessons he would have learned would have been yeah, worth it, I would guess. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and he had to help but, loads of people, but he was just like, all right, okay. But I think you're right. Wendy, in that it is about being yourself on social media, but we're attracted to positivity and passion 
not negativity. So, you know, you see those people going out and I think probably Facebook is the worst at this saying, oh, things are really bad for me. You know, they're like, where you then have to go, oh, what's happened? No, they want to buy off the rain. You do they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think at some, on some level, you have to say, right, I'm going to use social media as a networking tool for my business. And therefore I'm going to go out there. I'm going to add value. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to make people just want to be around me because I'm full of passion and, and all of that. And then when you're having that really bad day, you know, go and text your mum or your best friend or, you know, tell it to the dog or whatever, but don't get out there on social media going, I'm just being myself. And we all have down days. We do all have down days, but you wouldn't keep going into a shop where half the time you go in and, you know, the shopkeeper's in tears telling you all about their problems. <laughs> because <laughs> we've got our own problems. We can't possibly care about everybody that we don't even know. So yeah. I think one of the biggest tips we give to our clients is to say, yes, be yourself, be completely authentic on social media, but be your best self, be your savvy self, is what we say. Yeah. Be a radiator. Yeah. I mean, we've spent thousands on like mentors and coaches um, in the time that we've worked together. And imagine, Anita, if we showed up to one of the, the Zoom calls and they turned up like, oh, they're having a bad day. It's just not, oh, no, no, mental health is important. And there's a lot about around that. And I completely get that. But if somebody's paying you for a, a service, you do need to show up. Like, we wouldn't be paying the people that what we're paying if they came and was like, oh, do you know what? I'm having a bit of a down day today. So we'd be like, well, hang on, we're here. You know, we've got an hour with you now. We want your best you. So you've got to kind of think yeah. about that as well when you go out. Um, it's okay to have down days, but and it's okay to even post about them every now and then. But go and get pulled down that trap because people just will not want to buy from you. They just won't. They just yeah. won't want to. And you, they won't probably say it out loud and you won't know about it. No one's going to say, well, I was going to book you as my next confidence coach, for example, but I'm not now because... I noticed that you had a bit of a wobble there. and Because I'm me. British and I'm a bit too polite to actually tell you what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, no one was Stars, thinking. not scabs. That's the easy way to remember it. So if you've been through something that was like harrowing or whatever and you've healed, then go out and share that with people because you can help them when they're at the start of that journey. But if it's still a scab and it's still it's a bit still you, yeah, and you're trying to get validation or, you know, approval or happen. anything like that, then just you know, find a different avenue for that. But once it's all healed, then yeah, social media. Is Isn't it interesting how people go through certain experiences and then they change a vocation because it's affected them so deeply? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's inspirational for people that go, I've been through this, I've come out the other side, now I want to help others to do the same. And you're in a perfect position to do it, aren't you? Well, I think, ladies, we've talked enough about conversation in general and how that helps us. It fills us up, doesn't it, when we can share certain things and it's good to know what we can and should share to have that positive impact. But we're at that part of the show where I'm hoping that you're both ready to share that conversation that counted for you two AA ladies. We thought the conversation that we would speak about is the conversation we had about us actually working, making that decision to rather than just be doing our own thing, to actually come together to work together to bring something to people online. So originally we were only going to do one online program. So Anita and I knew that we were doing all right in our individual businesses, but we knew like Anita was, she'd work with one client and make impact on that one client. I would be, you know, maybe doing one property deal or doing whatever. And, and we noticed that people were struggling online, to, especially women our age or older, really, middle-aged women or older. They weren't getting their message out. The great, great people that, well, actually, we met a lot of them in networking, didn't we, where they were brilliant. Yeah. We were like, we never even knew you did that because then it's not getting out there. And we were like, there's so much that we know. Anita's got the educational background with all the degrees, PhDs and things around that. And for me, I'm just the person that presses every button going when, in social media. And I've always been very salesy and marketing and just trying different things that we could bring our skill set together to help lots of different people get out there and get savvy. Yeah, exactly. If it was only going to be one, we also wanted in our businesses rather than just help one person get some money, help one person get, we wanted something a bit more where we could help a group of people in one go and also something that we could roll out. But actually we were thinking of doing it as an evergreen course, weren't we at some point, like putting it together, put it online and it'll just make yeah. money without really doing a lot. But then it obviously became much more than that. As I was saying earlier, if you find out what you're not good at or what the gaps are in your skills in order to be where you want to be, go and find a way to plug them. And so I knew that I'd done marketing a long time. I was really good at the strategy side and the content side. But actually, because I'd been in that corporate bubble for so long, I hadn't used a lot of social media. So the actual 
tactics of doing it. Yeah, I saw Anna on there all the time. And every time we talk, she'd talk about this new thing that coming out that she was trying. I was thinking, oh, I need to know all of that. And so rather than just go out and try and learn it all, I thought, what a great idea. We'll just team up all of her skills. And she's had a, you know, a big online presence and all of that and all of my skills. Surely we can just help more people. And obviously, if you can help more people rather than just go out do networking, find a client, work with them, you know, maybe find four or five clients, work with them, help them so that they don't need you anymore and they'd have to go out and replace them with another one. That's a long, hard slog for like 30 years. And I thought, I don't really want to be still doing the rounds, you know, in 30 years time, just trying to get another client or not really knowing where they're coming from. I wanted to find a way that I'd got new clients coming in all the time, you know, an abundance of them that I could, you know, help them all kind of thing and and systemize that. And I just knew that I didn't quite have all the skills to do it on my own. So I knew Anna was the perfect, you know, other part of the jigsaw puzzle really. And so the conversation we had was, yeah, like she said, just about, oh, like let's come out with this online course then we can, you know, sell a load of these and then still have time to do our own thing. And we were kind of the victims of our own success in that, it's what people need and it's just taken off massively and we've helped far more people than we even thought we could as well and yeah. just absolutely loving it along the way as well. So where do people find you? Is it on Facebook? Is it social media? Is it naturally through networking? Where's your biggest in-stream from, if that's even a thing? Social media, we don't do much, if any, actually face-to-face networking anymore or Zoom networking. So yeah, the best way to find us is we're on social media, so we're on all platforms and you can either find us any Baldwin or Anna Geary or look for Get Savvy Club and you'll find yeah. us. We practice what we preach, so we put out content and people like come to us and ask how to work with us. That's how we do it. We, we've done like five-day challenges before as well. We've got a virtual summit that's coming up at the start of October. So people will obviously come on to that and then, you know, sort of have a day with us and then go on to work with us further. So all different ways really, but... We do practice what we preach, as in people mostly find us through social media. And then obviously podcast things, you know, going on into different people's audiences and worlds. I've tasked myself to do, I told you, didn't I, a hundred speaking events in the last four months. So although I need to, we don't really do any Zooms networking, we don't, but we would do go and speak at events, actually physically go and speak at people's events and things. But we would speak on a Zoom, wouldn't we? But yeah, we, don't we have a podcast as well, don't yeah. we? Yeah. And get Survey Club Marketing made easy. So once I'm there and have a listen. The podcast is random because when somebody messages us, us, maybe I can, maybe they email us or maybe they drop us a message on LinkedIn and say, oh, can I have a chat about potentially working with you? And then we jump on a Zoom much like this. And it's really strange because it's a, a disadvantage, but in a good way, because they know loads about us already. Like we don't know who these are because they've just been listening to our podcast and then we just know that they've just reached out. Maybe we've had a quick look on their LinkedIn or something, wherever they contacted us from and then they're like oh of course I know that you're a Leicester City fan oh and I know you love your cakes uh, Nita or whatnot and it's, it's the weirdest thing you must have it as well where it's like they know because they've power listened to like the marketing made easy and then they've you know reached out and said how do I work yeah. with you it's really it's an odd, odd yeah because you can't do much research on them because if they're needing help with their marketing you'd find yeah well, you'd just have a look you wouldn't be able to help yeah exactly yeah. but because they've maybe knocked around and listened for what because people like say, like they like to lurk or listen. You know, that's what's so really great about marketing using social media to market yourself is because you'll actually get people come out of the blue. One of our clients actually was on the local news because somebody reached out to her because she has an all vegan beauty salon. Um, but it's only because of the work that she's been doing with this and actually getting out there online that they know of her. And sometimes you feel like, oh, is anybody even listening to me? Or is anything, you know, like when you put the odd thing out, does it land? And in actual fact, there's people listening in and lurking and getting to know you all the time and you don't even know they exist. So it's, it's a good thing when that happens because they're all, they already know they want to work with you. They just want to see if it's how that's going to work and in, in which way maybe they might just need to just join our membership. Maybe it's work one-to-one, maybe join one of our group programs. That's what gives you goosebumps, isn't it? When you suddenly you get a review or an inbox message from somebody that you don't know and you go, oh, where's that come from? That's well, the adrenaline. I thought about you today when I was in my job interview and I thought what you said about this and I thought, I, I answered this way and you think, oh, brilliant. So, because it's a really um, intimate thing, isn't it? Just going into somebody's ears, like they're made, made, because people consume in all different ways. They're either on a walk or, you know, in their car or I listen to podcasts when I'm putting my clothes away. I bore him. But um, yeah, so. Dip- but yeah, we're really accessible. So, you know, connect with us, send us a message and we'll have a chat. We'll have a chat with anyone, really. Yeah. 
well, you're my kind of ladies because, you know, <laughs> we could probably chat for a lot yeah. longer. Yes. Um, but I think I just need to say thank you for coming and sharing your tips, sharing where they can find you and just keep supercharging those batteries, ladies. Yeah. It's been well, thank you. excellent to get to know you better today. Yeah. Thank you. And you. Much so lovely. Time. Thank you. And there you have it. Two bright young things that have come together and their story on how they formed Get Savvy. Now, of course, you can go and find all the details on the show notes and on our website, makingconversationscount.com. But I'm sure you'll be savvy enough yourself to go connect with them on the Facebook group. They have a five day challenge that they run every now and again. So go sign up for that. And there are other ways to work with them too. And uh, yeah, just carry on the conversation as I encourage you to do every single week. Next week, we're going to be talking to Chope Agbalusi. And I didn't have to be told how to say that. Join me next week. The reason why I left my, my corporate role all those years ago was I wanted to make a difference using the skill set that I, I had. And I was sick and tired of just seeing things not change. Till then, take care.